first met Sherlock Holmes in the winter of 1881. It was a cold, clear day in London. I had just returned from the war in Afghanistan and was staying at my club in St. James's. A friend heard that I was looking for a small, comfortable flat in the West End. And he arranged a meeting with Holmes, who had just moved into 221B Baker Street. I'm looking for Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Oh, you must be Dr. Watson. Yes. Mr. Holmes is expecting you. Come right up, sir. Thank you. I'm the housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson. How do you do, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Holmes is a very nice gentleman. I'm sure he is. He's a wee bit strange. Strange? He told me he was at the police crime laboratory this morning. Really? To beat a corpse with a stick. Why? I never asked him. I had no idea at the time that I was going to meet one of the most extraordinary men of the times. A man who would change and influence my entire life. My name is Dr. Dr. Watson. Yes. Come in, come in. Thank you. Please sit down. Thank you. Oh, I'll just get some of these things out of the way. Oh, I'll do that. No, don't bother. Those shoulder wounds can be rather sticky. Yes. It's important not to strain them unnecessarily. You're right. How did you know that I'd been wounded in the shoulder? The army hasn't yet released physicians or surgeons unless they've been seriously wounded. That's right. Would you care for some sherry? I have some here, I'm certain. Mm. How do you know I didn't sustain a leg wound? You're not limping. Foot shoulder. The left. Why the left? Your handshake's too firm for it to have been the right shoulder wound. How do you know I wasn't wounded internally? If you'd been wounded internally, there'd be no reason for you to carry your left shoulder so stiffly. Oh, it all seems very simple when you explain it like that. Of course. In fact, it's obvious. Exactly. Elementary. Quite. This is a very comfortable room. I think so. Where did I put those sherry glasses? Oh, will these do? I'll see who it is. Well, that, Mr. Holmes. I'll admit it, please. Sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, could you... Sorry. Thank you, sir. All right, Holmes, I like this flat. And I'm quite prepared to move over here from my club. There are certain things that you'll have to explain to me first. This might interest you. Really? Good heavens. What's wrong? There's been a murder. Oh, yes. Is he a friend of yours? Who? A murdered man, of course. No. Well, then the man who wrote the note is a friend of yours. Anthony Denham. No. Then what have you got to do with this murder? I'm going to solve it. You're going to solve it? Well, what about Scott yes, and Well, What about them? Well, it's their job to solve crimes. After all, you're not a detective. Yes, I am. Did you say you were a detective? Yes. You mean you solve crimes? I solve puzzles. Some of the puzzles I solve are crimes. Excellent. No, some are quite ordinary. Sorry, sir. Oh. Mr. Holmes. It's all right, lad. 
How do you do, Doctor? At this time, I'm very pleased to see Mr. Holmes. You've solved the case. I have. Not your kind of case, anyway, Holmes. Too simple? Mm, too obvious. No real mystery about it at all. Excellent. Who's the killer? I don't know. I mean, I don't know his exact name yet. But I know who did it. Fascinating, isn't it, Watson? Amazing. Do you care to see the scene of the crime, Doctor? By all means. But if you know who the killer is, why don't you know his name? Because his name is locked in the safe in the library. You mean the killer locked his own name in the safe? No, 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 no. The dead man's last will and testament is locked in the safe. And when we find out who benefits from the murder... Ah, that's the motive. Exactly. A man from the safe company in Manchester on his way down here should be here in the morning. When the man from Manchester arrives in the morning and opens the safe, the name of the killer will be revealed. Exactly. The library's in there. Um, you won't be put off by the sight of a corpse. I'm a doctor. Oh. Uh, yes, of course. I forgot. Now, you will notice that the bullet entered the right temple. There are powder marks as well. Now, normally one would presume this to be a case of suicide, but that is ruled out by the absence of the gun. Of course. Uh, his name was George Markham. Uh, a very interesting man. Very wealthy, too. Really? Yes. He went out to the gold fields of California in the United States of America and returned a multimillionaire. That is interesting. Do you suspect anyone in particular? I don't speculate, Dr. Watson. I leave that to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Holmes, I'd like to thank you for responding so quickly to my message. You're Anthony Denham. Yes, I am. Uh, was uh, Mr. Markham's uh, solicitor. I in fact, I was the one who discovered the body and sent for the police. They seem to have a situation well in hand. Yes. I'd like you to meet Mr. Markham's niece, Miss Andrea Markham. Certainly. There doesn't seem to be any mystery about this crime, Holmes. Mr. Denham, Dr. Watson. You sent the note. We're going to meet Mr. Markham's niece, Andrea. Yes, and her brother, Peter Clifford. Uh, Half-brother. I see. What was the relationship between Miss Markham's half-brother and her uncle? No blood relationship. I see. But I believe they got on very well together. Of course. Please. Andrea Markham, Peter Clifford, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson? Mr. Holmes. I believe when the police open the safe tomorrow morning, they will arrest me for murder. <laughs> cold out here, Holmes. Shouldn't be much longer now. What exactly are we waiting for, Holmes? I'll tell you what we're waiting for, Dr. Watson. Like all amateurs, Mr. Holmes thinks that the murderer will return to the scene of the crime. And we are going to catch him red-handed. Is that true, Holmes? We are going to catch the murderer red-handed. What makes you so certain it was murder, Lestrade? There's no gun. If a man shoots himself, the gun remains in the room. You're right, Inspector. Well, that's obvious. Yes. If a man commits suicide, the gun would obviously have to be in the room. Therefore, the question becomes, who stole the gun? What? And why? Do you mean that there haven't been a murder? 
But he committed suicide and somebody came into the room and stole the gun. I didn't say that. I just heard you say it. You said... I said if and why and who. If, why, who, what? Just the questions a detective should ask himself, Watson. You're doing extremely well for your first case. Are you telling us? Pretending to read it. But why should he pretend? He thinks he's here alone. He knows that Scotland Yard would never leave the murder room unguarded. You mean that he knows that we're watching him? He assumes someone is watching. He's got it open. Probably an Army 45 caliber revolver. You can't see that from here. I'm just guessing, Mr. Rudd. That's exactly what it is. An Army 45 caliber. How did you know he'd take that gun out of the safe? He didn't take it out of the safe. But I saw him. I'm sorry, Inspector. Would you prefer me not to speak? Uh, yes. No. No. Oh, but I don't know. You're saying that everything I'm seeing, I'm not seeing. Now we'll never know if the combination is written on that piece of paper. Yes, we will. It's burnt. It's gone, Holmes. Even you can't bring it back from the ashes. It's not in the ashes, Lestrade. The paper he had in his hand is now in the safe. Then what was that he threw in the fireplace? The will. What? Look. At... He's hiding the gun in the urn. No, he's not. I can see him, Holmes. We can all see him. If we can all see him hiding it, and he knows we can see him, then he's not hiding it. He is placing a gun gently inside an urn. Nothing else. I'm going to arrest him. Why? What? 